Hello and welcome to this video about creating patterns using chops. So the pattern chop in Touch Designer is one of the most useful ways and simplest ways of creating patterns. Um, there's a bunch of different parameters that it lets you have access to. We'll be focusing on length, number of cycles, type, um, and some of the other uh, more interesting ones down here. But the, the length is, is the one that I wanna point your attention to first. So length specifies the number of samples that create the pattern. So um, if I middle mouse over here, we can see the length of this uh, ch uh, channel. The number of samples in the channel is 1,000, and that relates to this length up here. So if I change this to 2,000, uh, we'll see that number change. So that's a really good way of, of creating larger arrays of, of these patterns that have uh, more samples to them. Um, another um, fun parameter to play around with on the pattern chop is the number of cycles. So if I were to increase this to five, I'm now creating five cycles of this sine wave within that 2000 sample um, uh, chop. So uh, we're still only at one channel, but we're now at 2000 samples and we're doing the same uh, sign that was specified before just five times now. So uh, that's also uh, very fun. This, this becomes really useful when we're talking about things like um, the square wave and the ramp because uh, these, I find them super useful when I'm creating scenes that require me to like move uh, an idea across or up um, and then uh, recycle it immediately. So uh, these, these are both uh, really, really interesting things uh, to, to play around with in generative scenes. So one thing to look at though, when we're looking at patterns is the, um, this, this dotted line that appears at the beginning and end of our uh, chop here. So we have this solid red line, that's the pattern that we've made. Uh, but then we have uh, these dashed lines that appear and we can get a better look at them if we make the chop viewer active and zoom out slightly. Uh, and we can see that it's actually just an extension of the, um, uh, the pattern that we've made. So these are actually called extend regions. So we have an extend region left and an extend region right. So um, these are things that we can play around with and change though and, and specify. So uh, in the channel page, we can uh, extend left and extend right and change maybe the extend left to be a slope, which will take the last two um, samples of the channel or the first two samples of the channel, whichever side you may be on, and extend the slope, uh, continuing the line downward or upward or whichever way it's going. And then uh, the other side we might uh, change to be a mirror, which takes the, the exact same um, uh, sample values that were coming into it and, and output it mirrored against the last sample. So uh, that's an interesting way to kind of create some of these you know, weirder curly cues um, off, to the, off to the left, or sorry, off to the right. And can ultimately create some more interesting patterns, um, which I'll show you now. So uh, we'll drop down another pattern chop here. And I'll do this by maybe extending this out by four cycles and then dropping the taper. So the taper allows us to kind of specify, you know, our, our amplitude can get a little bit more narrow towards one side or the other. And if we zoom out again, we can see that this is currently set to cycle, cycle. But another, another quick way of looking at that is to middle mouse button. And you can see this extend key here has the left side cycle and the right side cycle uh, as its extend modes, so uh, or extend behavior. So we can, of course, come in here and change this. I wanna actually mirror both of them because I get this cool bow tie uh, type shape um, that we'll, uh, we'll use to create an interesting pattern here. So um, I wanna show you how to actually use extend regions though. Um, one way that I've used them uh, is to take a trim so you use the trim chop and then feed in the pattern that has an extend region. Um, and then uh, you, you can adjust the amount that we trim in and trim out on, uh, on these chops. And for the end parameter here, I just want to 
um, you know, trim out a little bit more and uh, about a thousand samples. And what that'll give me is that that first bow tie event here, like where, where we end our, our mirrored pattern on the other side. So we can see that we're now looking at about 2000 samples and we're still mirrored mirrored for our extend. But, um, you know, we've we've now separated out uh, just from this one pattern, we've created more of a complex looking thing here. So another, another way to use pattern though, is to feed it something to use. So we're gonna just grab one more pattern here. And um, you know, what we might do uh, here is add in one more, because why not, um, and change this one to be a square wave. And now I can feed this uh, sign pattern into the square wave pattern. And then uh, nothing happens right off the bat because we have to set what happens with this combined channels parameter. And we can do that, um, there's a, the, um, the one that I wanna use here is multiply because it'll create these like, you know, humps that kind of move forever in this way coming off of this sign pattern, which is going from a negative one, a positive one to a negative one. Um, but we can do the same thing with the cosine and get something a little funky too, or, um, you know, triangle uh, and get, you know, more peaks coming out of it. And this also gets, um, you know, interesting when you start to taper it and get a little bit more variation in your extend region as you, as you move outward. So the last thing that I wanna look at is um, adding a little bit of noise into these patterns. So um, one of my uh, new favorite ways of making uh, noise uh, is to use the audio oscillator actually, um, and to uh, change its type to white noise and then turn off its time slice and then set the sample rate to be the length that I'm trying to match on my, on my pattern. So in this case, it's a thousand. So I'm just gonna type in a thousand here and then feed that into this initial pattern. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll set the combined type for this one to add. And then uh, we, might, we might back down the amplitude a little bit. And now what we end up is with this fuzzy triangle pattern that's extended out here. It's a little hard to see with the, the extend regions, but if we zoom in here, um, you, you get that, that same uh, triangle pattern that uh, is these peaks and valleys, but it's a little fuzzier. So this is, this is a really good way to start to create some more compound patterns uh, with very little effort using the pattern chop um, and then uh, extend regions.